Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on how to identify special solutions of compound inequalities. Our objectives today are that you will just do that, identify special solutions of compound inequalities while sol solving inequalities. The question I want you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson is what is the difference between the solution set of an AND compound inequality, which is an intersection, or of an OR compound inequality, which is a union? So if you can understand the difference between these ideas, today's special solutions lesson will come naturally to you. The types of solutions that you have when you solve compound linear inequalities is that when you have an OR, you may have a solution set that represents the union of two qualities. So probably prior to watching this video, you're accustomed to either having a union or an intersection. But understanding that when you solve an AND compound inequality, same as with an OR, you may have a solution set that represents the intersection. There are special situations where these do not happen. When this does not occur, we first have one option. It could be that a compound inequality may have a solution set that is no solution, meaning that there is not an intersection, if it's an AND compound inequality, of the solution sets. A compound inequality may have a solution set that represents all real numbers if the graph represents all the values on the number line. A compound inequality may have a solution set that turns out to be one inequality rather than two if the graph's intersection can be represented as such. And the fourth type would be a compound inequality may have a solution set that is one value, so something like x equals two, if the graph represents one common solution. So these are four instances that may happen when you're solving compound inequalities. And it's really important that when you are solving compound inequalities that you always graph your solution sets to give yourself a vis visual representation of the solutions. And that will trigger whether or not you need to know if it's no solution, all real numbers, only using one inequality to represent the solution set, or even only one value. So let's continue and do some examples together. First, I wanna show you what happens when you have a compound inequality with no solution. So we're gonna solve our compound inequality and graph our solution. So here we have an and, we have 19x subtract 11 is less than 12x plus 17, less than or equal to seven plus 14x. So the first thing I'm gonna do is separate this into two inequalities. I have the first and the second. So you can see I've separated them. So let's solve our first. I'm going to collect variable terms by subtracting 12x from both sides, giving me 7x minus 11 is less than 17. Collect constant terms to the right by adding 11 to both sides. And now I have 7x is less than 28. Now, clear the coefficient, divide both sides by 7, and I have x is less than 4. And we need to come up and solve our second, so I'm going to collect variable terms to the left by subtracting 14x from both sides, which gives me negative 2x plus 17 less than or equal to 7. Isolate the variable term by collecting the constants to the right, so I'm going to subtract 17 from both sides giving me negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 10. Now I'm gonna clear the coefficient, dividing both sides by negative two. It's a negative value, so I need to reverse the symbol. And I have x is greater than or equal to positive five. I'm gonna to go to the next slide to graph this. So I'm gonna carry over our solution of our inequalities, x less than four and x greater than or equal to five. So let's go ahead and set up our number line. I'm gonna make this four and this one five. So graphing this, I'm gonna have an open circle on four to the left. Graphing this inequality, I'm gonna have a closed circle on five to the right. 
And what I notice is this is an and, but I don't have an intersection. There are no common solutions, no common values between these two inequalities. So seeing as there is no intersection of solution, I have no solution. There is no solution represented on this number line that is true for both inequalities. So remember your solution set needs to be all the values that are true for both inequalities. And in this case, we have none, so we answer no solution. Now let's look at a compound inequality that has a solution of all real numbers. Here we have an or, so I have one inequality or this inequality. So let's go ahead and solve. So I'm gonna look at the first, I'm gonna collect variable terms by adding 14 X to both sides to collect the variable term to the left. That will leave me X minus 16 less than or equal to 17. Collect constants to the right by adding 16 to each side, giving me X is less than or equal to 33. And this is an OR, so come up here. I'm going to collect variable terms by select, subtracting 11X from both sides, which will give me X minus 13 greater than or equal to 20. Collect constants to the right by adding 13 to each side, giving me X is greater than or equal to 33. So let's go ahead and graph this. I only need one value because both of them are 33. I'm going to put a closed circle and the solutions to the left, a closed circle and the solutions to the right because it's greater than. And what happens is I have the entire number line shaded in and it says or. So any value on the number line is a solution to one or the other. So remember an or is the union. We put all the solutions together and because they overlap and cover the whole number line, my solution is all real numbers. There's also a symbol you can use for all real numbers. It is this R. Typically when you write it, you have two vertical lines here and make an R, but this is what it would look like if you were using an equation editor on a computer. Now let's look at an example when our solution will be one inequality. So I'm going to solve my compound and inequality and graph my solution. So first I'm going to start with this inequality, collecting the variable term by subtracting X, giving me 15 minus 2X, negative X and negative X is negative 2X, less than or equal to 1. Collect constants to the right by subtracting 15 from each side. And now I have negative 2X less than or equal to negative 14. Divide both sides by the coefficient of negative 2. I have to reverse my symbol because I'm dividing by a negative value, giving me the inequality X, flip my sign, reverse it, negative 14 divided by negative 2 is 7. I know this is an AND, so I need to solve my second inequality. I'm going to collect variable terms by subtracting 2X from each side. This gives me 3 plus X is greater than or equal to 9. Collect constants to the right by subtracting 3 from each side, and I have that x is greater than or equal to 6. Remembering that I have my and, so let's go ahead and graph. I'm going to plot 7, and then I need my 6. Let's graph our first inequality. I need a closed circle on 7, greater than to the right. I need a closed circle because it can be equal to on six and shade it to the left. I mean, so sorry, shade it to the right. So used to doing that, right? And it's greater than, so be careful when you're doing this. Now it's an and, so I'm looking for the intersection. So if I look at this, all the values seven and greater are true for both. Remember, that's what and means. Which of your graphed solutions are true for both inequalities? So seven and higher is the true solution for all. So we are going to answer X is greater than or equal to seven because seven and anything higher is true to both inequalities. And when we have that and, that's what we're looking for, our intersection. So there's an example where we're, our answer to this compound inequality is a single inequality. All right, now it's your turn. 
I've shown you a bunch, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, graph, determine your solution, and come back and hit play to see your solution done out. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we have an or. I'm going to first solve the first one. We're going to add 6 to each side, and we get 3 plus 6 is 9, so we have an inequality of x is less than or equal to 9. It's going to now solve the second by subtracting 2 from each side giving me 3x is greater than 6. To clear the coefficient by dividing both sides by 3, and x is greater than 2. We have to remember that we have our or here, so we're looking for a union. Here's my graph. I'm going to plot 9, and then I have to count back 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and I'm going to graph. I need a closed circle on 9, and it's less than. I need an open circle on 2, and it's greater than. So we're looking for an intersection, and my entire number line is shaded. So every number on here, and it's all real numbers. Don't forget your real number symbol if you want to use it. You don't have to. All right, here we go. We're going to solve the inequality and graph the solution, but it's your turn. Go ahead and pause. Come back to check your solution. Welcome back. So let's solve. We're going to add 1 to each side to isolate the variable term, giving me 5x is greater than or equal to negative 20. Divide both sides of the inequality by 5, and I get the x is greater than or equal to negative 4. It's an and. We're going to come up, isolate this variable term by collecting the constants. Let's subtract 5 from each side. That gives me 5x is greater than 20. Clear the coefficient by dividing both sides by 5. And x is greater than 4. Now we're going to set up our number line. We need the negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we can graph. I need a closed circle on negative 4, arrow to the right. I need an open circle on 4, arrow to the right. It's greater than. And I have an and, so I'm looking for the intersection. My intersection is anything greater than 4. So this inequality is the solution to this compound inequality because all the values greater than 4 are true for both inequalities. That's where my intersection, or think of it, is overlapping on the number line. Your turn. Try this one. Please pause and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So I'm going to show you a little trick on this one. So we have a compound inequality here, but let's separate it. I have this one, and then I have negative 3x plus 4 is less than 14. So let's go ahead and, and collect constants. We're going to subtract 4 from each side. 18 is less than negative 3x. Divide both sides by negative 3 to clear the coefficient. I'm dividing by a negative value, so I must reverse the symbol. Negative 6 greater than x. And we have, we're going to reverse that to graph it. So when we flip the variable and the constant, we also have to reverse our sign. And we're going to come up and solve the second. Subtract 4 from each side, giving me negative 3x is less than 10. Clear the coefficient by dividing by negative 3, which means I need to reverse my symbol. And I'm going to have x greater than negative 10 thirds. So let's graph. I have my 0 already on my number line, so my negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and negative uh, 10 thirds is just going to be past negative 3. So I need an open circle on negative 6 to an arrow to the left because it's less than. I need an open circle on negative 10 thirds and arrow to the right because it's greater than. And then I need to remember it's an and, so I'm looking for the intersection, which does not exist. There is no overlapping here. There is no intersection of solutions. So I have no solution for this compound inequality. Your turn. Go ahead and pause. Come back to check your work. Welcome back. 
So I'm going to solve my first inequality by adding 3 to each side, giving me 2x is greater than or equal to 4. Clear the coefficient by dividing both sides by 2 and giving me x is greater than or equal to 2. This is an and. To solve the second, I'm going to subtract 1 from each side, giving me 5x is less than or equal to 10. Clear the coefficient by dividing each side by 5, and x is less than or equal to 2. Let's go ahead and set up our graph. I'm going to, I only need the value of 2 on my number line. So I'm going to have a closed circle on 2 and arrow to the right because it's greater than. The second one, closed circle on 2 and arrow to the left because it's less than. It's an and, so I'm looking for the intersection. The only solution that is true for both of these inequalities is the value of 2. So my solution is just that, x equals 2. So this is usually the hardest for students to understand. We have an inequality and our solution is the equation x equals 2. But that's what our graph tells us. All right, your turn again. Please pause, show your work, don't forget to graph, and come back to check. Welcome back. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut here. Because I don't do this often, but when there's a simple inequality, we can just add 5 to each part of our inequality. So whatever we do to one side of the inequality symbol, we must do to the other. So if we add 5, we add 5, and we add 5, we followed the laws, the properties of algebra, and we've done the same to all parts. Negative 3 and 5 is 2. We've cleared this. These are opposites. We're left with x, and negative 1 and 5 is 4. So here's my compound inequality solution. I'm going to rewrite it to graph it. Remember, this is x. When we reverse it, we have to flip the symbol. x is greater than 2, and x is less than 4. So let's put 2 on our number line, 3, 4 on our number line. We need an open circle on 2 and greater than to the right. We need an open circle on 4 and less than. And there's our intersection. So take off those arrows that I went too far on, and here we go. This is just that, normal one. So our solution is x is greater than 2 and x is less than 4. So I hope that didn't trick you. I threw this in to make sure that you understand. Just as we learn to solve compound inequalities, you need to be able to recognize when your solution is that, your solution. Okay, go ahead and try this. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check. Welcome back. I'm going to do my little trick again. Subtract 6 from each part of my compound inequality. 6 minus 6 is 0, 6x, and negative 36. Now I'm going to divide each part of my inequality by 6 to clear the coefficient. And then I have 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to negative 6. I'm going to break this out, flip this, reverse the symbol, and x is less than or equal to negative 6. So here's my graph. I'm going to plot 0, and then I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 4, negative 5, negative 6. All right, I need a closed circle on 0, and it's greater than, so my arrow's to the right. Negative 6, I need a closed circle because it can be equal to and shaded to the left. It's an and, so I'm looking for the intersection, which does not exist. There is no intersection, so I have a no solution. And there you have it. That is how you identify special solutions of compound inequalities. So be careful. Sometimes you have what you would expect, and sometimes you have what you would not expect. But the graph does not lie. So make sure you graph your solutions and look for intersections for and and unions for ors. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.